welcome to your April 2020 Love and General Reading. I'm Gemstone Tarot and you are Leo, Sun, Moon or Rising or all of the above or none of the above, cross watchers. Everybody's welcome, Leo. Okay, what does Leo need to know about April? Your readings, you know, in the last few months have been getting deeper and I would say more positive, actually. But it's been what I like to call spiritual big jobs all the way. It's been pretty major, hasn't it? Things are happening. Big style. It, it has been fortune favours the brave. It has been go big and go home. And the Ace of Pentacles has come up in your shuffle many times. That one, that's a shy one. Oh, look at that. Oof. Okay, what does Leo need to know? It feels like your cards need like a blast. Let's do that. Okay, this is a weird way of doing it. Oof, oh, Leo, that's good. I'm choosing your cards in a strange way. So the pack has kind of gone in a weird shape and there are cards sticking out and I'm fishing them out for you because I'm no stranger to randomness, Leo. In fact, I celebrate and embrace it. And maybe that is the message for you too. Strong cards. Oh, okay. Oh, hello. Some jumpers. Let's have an overall energy card for my lovely Leo. Oh, lovely Leos. The cards are very obedient today. It's like, your wish is my command. Ping. Okay, I want to look at the bottom of that pack. Oh, nice. Okay. Things are moving. I am not going to ignore the Ace of Pentacles that kept popping up in your shuffle, okay? So, particularly entrepreneurially, that is a big word for me at the moment, um, starting a business, starting something new, okay? It's an Ace, it's Pentacles, it's real, it's solid, okay? And like I said, since 2018, when your world was kind of deconstructed, I think, by the universe in many different ways, which left you very discombobulated. That's my discombobulated mind. Um, I feel like when you've had those eclipses in your sign, it takes two years for me to steady the ship and to actually capitalise on the psychic, spiritual, emotional, financial, human experiences that those eclipses threw up, okay? So, you've had some turbulence over the last year and you've had shifting sands, that's for sure, but you're starting to kind of row the boat, I think is the best way I can put it. It feels like, because look, that Ace of Swords came out. That is the kind of clarity you'd have killed for in 2018. <laughs> you know when you're like, um, like that, you're just like, what's going on? Everything's raw. And you just want some truth to come or someone to tell you what to do or a book to drop out of the ceiling and just go do this. You know, Gandalf, you will pass, follow me, whatever it is. But you don't get it because the universe forces you to muddle through, okay? Backpedal and muddle. What happens now is all of that casserole of nonsense kind of turns into the most unique clarity which appears to come from nowhere but it's not coming from nowhere because you kind of earned your stripes in 2018 slash 2019 because there was a lunar eclipse in Leo in January 2019 I think if I remember rightly so there's a reason why in the ace of swords it's a cosmic fist that like 
comes in from the clouds. It's just a bit, woohoo, there's the Ace of Swords. Now, there's your crown chakra. Carry on up the crown chakra is what I say. There's no overthinking and Leos overthink, okay? Leos do. I don't think, and I don't know if it's your proximity to Virgo in the astrological chart, but no one ever mentions it in the astrology books. You know, all you get is Leo, sexy, fiery, you know, and you think, yeah, they are, but also overthinky, stews on things and worries about stuff at night, okay? That's what Leos do. And I don't think people understand that, okay? Now, instead of cyclical worry, which is that kind of, what about this, what about that, what about this, what about that, uh, which tires you out and frankly never produces any results, now you get this buff. Aha, I'm going to do this. It's so easy, okay? But like I say, you've earned it. Four of Wands, beautiful thing. That is a portal. The Four of Wands is a very auspicious card. I always say that because Jonathan Kainer, the late great Jonathan Kainer, um, on his tarot thing that he's got online, always says that. It's a very auspicious card. It's a lucky card. It's a lovely card. It's a bower of heaven. It's 11-11. It's relationships. It's happy homes. It's stepping through. If you think of that, it looks like you've won something. Yeah, it is. It's like a celebration, you know. I like it. The only caveat, that's my caveat fingers, the only caveat is the nine of wands, okay? Fire energy, sort of a Sagittarius card, but sometimes when you've had all those eclipses in your life and your drawers have been turned out as it were and your life has gone upside down and all of the security that you might have had has disappeared and so you've got a really creaky chair um all your security has disappeared and everything has <clears throat> sort of abandoned you in a way and you're drifting about and you know wandering the lonely planet what you start to do is build defenses against goodness because you have to you know, you're like, luck is not happening. This not good things don't happen to me. Um, I don't. <laughs> you you start to expect the worst. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Okay, so just beware of that, because this is a reading that says you're going to be lucky. I know, and that's a really difficult pill for you to swallow because you haven't been for quite a long time. Okay, now. This is interesting. The Hierophant and the High Priestess. Masculine kind of energy, feminine kind of energy. The High Priestess is the esoteric kind of princess of wisdom, okay? She is internally knowledgeable. There is a, she's the mystic. She is, she knows the answers in a kind of a soul way. There's two meanings with this for you. One is there's someone else in your life that's going to show you how to open this, the door to that portal. It could be male or female, that person, but they are connected in some way psychically that helps you either they're connected to you or they're just connected to something that you need to connect to and they help you to get there so that could be a therapist it could be a healer it could be a doctor it could be a teacher it could be a friend it could be anybody okay but it's important because it releases you from the kind of worry bondage that you've been in or your way of seeing the world. Six of Swords. You get rode away. Is that even a word? Rode? Rode away. It sounds awful, doesn't it? Someone rose you away from trouble. Let's just stick with that. Six of Swords is a card where, yes, you take your worry with you because the Six of Swords go with you in the boat, but hey, there you go. What's that thing they say? 
where you go, there you are. In other words, you take yourself with you anyway. You can't, you know, get out of your own head. But six of swords is always someone taking you there. Somebody kind of rows you in the boat. You're not rowing your own boat because universe has kind of worked out at this point. You might have done enough and you're a bit too tired to also row the boat as well as be in the boat because it took you everything you had to find the boat and then you had to have the gumption to get in it. So as a reward, the universe sends you a ferryman, a ferry woman, a ferry person, whatever, a driver, okay? <sighs> then we have the Hierophant. The Hierophant is authority. It's also the guru. So the Hierophant is the key to religious wisdom in a way. Now you can see this is the high priest and this is the high priestess, put it that way. His is external. So it's like the hierarchy of the church. He's the high priest, he's the top dog, he knows the most, he's the wise one. A bit like, um, what's he called? The special one who used to, oh, what's it? That's not the best example, is it? I can't even remember his name. What's he called? Leave me a comment, Leo, the football manager. He calls himself the special one who now manages Tottenham. Look, not that many people are into tarot and football. I am. <laughs> if you are, Mourinho, there you go, the special one. Okay, it's quite a masculine thing. The Hierophant is the special one. The High Priestess is the special one too, but it's a hidden, esoteric, internal, not going to really talk about it. Remember the High Priestess or the Oracle at Delphi? When you went to see her, she didn't blab the farm. She, you would blab the farm. You go, what's going to happen? Oh, I don't know. Ooh, I really need your advice. She sort of sits on some weird thing where there's vapours, like this. And then she speaks in, this is obviously my mind for speaking in tongues. She speaks in tongues. Blah, she just wobble a load of weirdness at you. And you just have to work it out from there. The high priest issues an edict, a paper, a law, okay? It's external, it's going out there. But they are joined together. So there is a point to this, Leo. The high priestess energy, something internal, shifts in you that is deeply spiritual that then almost gets written as law in your life. Something happens at last, okay? At last. Overall energy card, six of pentacles. So you may get money coming in. This is my weird tax rebate, little bag of cash, um, job on the side money. It's not your normal job money. It's not money you're expecting. It's not money you've just strictly earned in a normal, boring way. It's gift money. Could be a bit of inheritance, could be... It can sometimes, though, be someone paying it forward. So you may... Um, someone may do therapy for free or something. They pay it forward to you in a way that you probably earned two years ago. Sorry about that. Okay. My camera battery ran out. Okay. So you have clarity coming in, you have luck, and you have a portal of kind of awareness, definitely a higher spiritual, yeah, level of awareness, okay? Now Chuck Spezzano's healing cards, you get the unconscious of the personal myth. You get a chance, and you can only do this, and I've been saying this to you, Leo, for a few months, you know, where you've got to go down the steps, the subconscious, you've got to go into the nitty gritty, you know, the id and the ego and all that Freudian stuff. This is also about your parents. We've got the high priestess and the hierophant, okay? Who taught you what? Things your father taught you, things your mother taught you. There comes a point and it comes again and again like a wave in everybody's life. And it doesn't just happen at 18. It's not like you believe everything your parents say and wake up at 18 and go, I'm an independent adult and I'm gonna row my own boat. You know, you don't. You have a little epiphanies. Epiphanies. I like the word epiphany because it's got the word fanny in it. <laughs> Things that make me laugh. Okay, you're gonna get epiphanies about what your parents taught you, about their relationship with each other, how you are in relationships, how you may be breaking the code of your personal myth. 
Wow, Leo, that actually, woohoo, made me feel like, you know when you're on a roller coaster and you go woo like that? I actually felt excited for you. And I am, okay? Ooh. Now, Leo, in the extended reading, I will look at your love life. I know, because we haven't looked at your love life. So the link will be in the description box. I'm going to go straight there and I'm going to, this is gorgeous love cards and I'm going to investigate. Whoa. Leo, the healing comes in the letting go of one person and the joining together with another. You genuinely have to let that go, okay? Whatever it is first. <clears throat> because it's not what you thought it was. The person is not who you thought they were, okay? There we have this person who thinks there's a knight in shining armour and then they look behind and there's just a skinny guy in board shorts falling in love, but only once you let that other person go, okay? We will look at that in the extended reading. And I'm fairly excited, actually, because you will also get the kind of clarity about in your love life that you haven't had for ages. Oracle card, you get unfinished symphony. That is about letting somebody or something go, okay? Playing out the same tune, the same song, the same argument, the same whatever it is. You've heard it all before. Nice. And you get celebration. So keep an eye on the moon cycles. This is a full moon. We do have a full moon in Taurus towards the end of the month. Have a Google on that. But also it just means look out for the, the full and the new moons and the cycle between them, okay? Leo, I'm gonna go and do your extended reading. The link's in the description box. I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.